With all the focus on the Democratic 2020 candidates, conservative grassroots organization Heritage, Heritage Action for America unveiled what that group says is a, quote, winning agenda for Republicans in 2020. The initiative is based on the results of three opinion polls that have been conducted nationwide. Executive Director Tim Chapman says that the goal was to determine what is currently motivating the GOP and create a roadmap for conservatives to build an agenda. He joins us now to expand on the findings. Uh, the findings. Tim, thank you so much for joining <laughs> us. Thanks for having me. And Although we were just talking about <laughs> there may be some fightings. Tim, I I'm, I'm, was really fascinated by this polling because, I mean, it showed that, A, immigration is at the top of voters' minds, but yeah. broadly it shows that there have been there is a huge disconnect between what a lot of the focus on is here in Washington yeah. and what Republican voters actually want. So tell us a little about yeah, what Yeah, I mean, I, I think... I think that a lot's changing in the conservative movement and the party, For really. Sure. And I yeah. think that if you look at 2016, the president was the only guy in that primary who didn't run in some fashion as a Reagan Republican. Right. Um, and because he ran on kind of um, uh, non-traditional issues, he was able to pull a coalition together that looked a lot different than coalitions right. we've had in the past. And he was able to bring working class Americans into the coalition. Those white working, working class Americans. Well, yeah, and I think that's a big challenge for him. I think that, that the issues that white working class Americans face, all working class Americans face. Mm -hmm. Yes. And I think that's a big challenge for the party, but yes. Yeah. And so I think that what the party has to do is figure out a way to talk to that specific segment of the country mm -hmm. um, and put issues in front of them that attract them uh, going forward. And so yeah. that's what we've been working on. So yeah. Heritage historically is focused a lot on tax cuts, on deregulation. I mean, is that still the agenda for the party moving forward? Look, tax cuts and deregulation are important. They help fuel economic growth. I don't think that can be the only thing you run on. So that's I the most that's interesting the thing, right, is that the part of the Trump break apart the Overton window was yeah. that it's like, oh, wait, GDP growth is not the be-all, end-all of a society. And actually, right. voters don't respond to that Although he's pretty whatsoever. happy to tout it when it goes in his favor. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Of course he is. I mean, everybody's happy about yeah. GDP growth, but it's like, yeah, this, isn't the only, yeah. this isn't the only important thing. What are the what are the issues that are really important? So what popped for groups? us is we, were, yeah. we, we did um, a significant survey work. We did a couple of national surveys. We did a battleground, uh, 15 uh, congressional battleground district survey, mm -hmm. and a five battleground states survey. Hmm. And what really popped for us is that the issues that are animating people are around immigration, culture, mm -hmm. workforce, and economic fairness. Yeah. And, and you've got to look at those issues. And, and the challenge for Republicans and conservatives really is to find a way to take your principles um, and apply those to those issue areas. And to me, you can't do that by just promoting the same policies we've been pr promoting as a party for 30 years. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's the most interesting part. And I mean, Talk a little bit about the legacy of your organization in this, because, I mean, Heritage Action for America was not necessarily one who's known for pushing an immigration agenda or, or any of these other things in expense of, of one on spending. How has that ideological evolution uh, come about under your reign? Well, I yeah. think we've been there since we started Heritage Action, the sister organization to Heritage, mm -hmm. in 2010. And a lot was changing at that time. Yeah. And that was, a, that was a huge year. We had the Tea Party right. wave that happened. The Tea Party wave started to change Washington. But really what, it, what began to happen is a lot of kind of anti-establishment sentiment. Yeah. And that anti-establishment sentiment, it was on the left and the right, really. Um, but people were getting very tired of kind of the same status quo in Washington. Um, and so what, we, they, what people were increasingly looking to us to do was to find a way to be creative and think about, okay, what... You've, you're an organization whose sister organization, the Heritage Foundation, has been here since 1973. Yeah. You've been the cradle of the conservative movement for a long time. Think about ways that you can think about conservative principles and apply them to the challenges of today. Um, and so we see ourselves in that role as being able to kind of try to lead the movement in a, in a sense. And, and I think that Trump, you know, really... Um, Trump, we, we were in these battles, I mean, for for six years, 2010 to 2016, oh, Heritage remember, Action yeah. <laughs> was in these battles with the leadership of the Republican Party. And I think we did not see Trump coming. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. um, but Trump really kind of rode the wave that a lot of the stuff that we were doing, um, mm -hmm. a lot of that anti-establishment stuff. And we were talking about cronyism and we were talking about the ways that Washington was constantly failing um, all sorts of people across the country. Um, and he was able to come in and he kind of rode that wave in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that's given us a, 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 you know, a moment to step back and think, well, all right, now we've got to think about what 
what is the real conservative agenda that aligns with this populist moment that we're in yeah. today? Well, and, you know, part of the challenge uh, that I want to hear your thoughts on is you talked about Trump's appeal with the white working class, which mm -hmm. is undeniable, especially white working class men in particular, yeah. um, and how that needs to be expanded to a multiracial coalition. Yeah. How do you do that, though, when the rhetoric is coming out about, you know, send them back and the Nazis that marched in Charlottesville, there's fine people on both sides. Like, how do you overcome that? I, it's got to be about policy. At the end of the day, it's got to be about policy. And we're encouraging the administration to put forward right now a policy agenda that focuses on working class issues. Um, and I believe that at the end of the day, um, you're always going to have this. I can't change the president's rhetoric, mm -hmm. right? Um, but we can go out to communities across this country and tell people how various policies will impact them at right. the end of the day. But if so, you're hearing that message coming from the White House, and yeah. this is the leader of the party, yeah. right? If that's mm -hmm. setting the tone, People aren't going to feel welcome in the Republican Party. Yeah, it's, it's not a helpful tone. Yeah, yeah. I mean, look, it, it, it's not. I, I understand that. Um, and, uh, and, and it's not all the president. I mean, there's stuff going on all around him. I mean, the, the tone is being dragged down by all the actors Steve on the King, stage right also now. Not helpful. I mean, like, yeah. everything uh, could be better. Um, but I actually am I'm optimistic um, mm -hmm. that we can get to a place soon as a conservative movement um, where we start to put these policies front and center. And I just think when you start to drill down the policies and, we, you know, if people go to our website and look at what we actually discovered in this polling, you'll see that these policies cut across all segments tell, of the Tell country. us a bit about the policies. That's what I, I would actually I mean, like so look, it's not I, something we hear from the White House Yeah, I mean, time. one of the things that, you know, immigration obviously yeah. is huge, um, and there are... Um, on, on the immigration issues, the thing, the, the frustrating thing is that in the polling, um, some I think it's skewed in the polling because immigration has come to be identified as the president's signature issue. Mm -hmm. um, but I think when you drill down to really common sense things, like should we, should people who come to this country illegally be able to access the social benefits that we right. have in this country? I, I think when you look across all demographics, that's a no-brainer. Okay, mm -hmm. um, and then you look at other issues like um, you know economic fairness or like workforce issues. I think workforce is huge. Um, we've we've discovered that there is a there is a right now across uh, all the different polls that we looked at, and this is bipartisan. People are generally happy that wages are going up, but that's that. So there's some optimism there, but it's tied to this extreme anxiety about what might come down the, down the line. In right. one of our polls, we had 83% of respondents say that they were worried that their jobs were going to be automated out of existence within yeah. 10 to 15 so years. So what do you what do you propose to deal with that? I mean, you've got, you know, on the Democratic side, we're talking about UBI, yeah. talking about raising the minimum wage, talking about federal yeah. jobs guarantees, talking about unionization. What's yeah. the Republican answer to that? I think we need to reinvigorate um, the notion of, 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 of all sorts of kinds of work as being dignified in this country. So right now, just for example, this touches a little bit on workforce, but it touches on higher education as well, which is a big issue that popped in our polls. Um, right now, you know, Pete Buttigieg actually got this 50% right, in my opinion, at the beginning of his campaign. He went out on, he went out on stage and he said, why is it that 50% of this country who doesn't go to college is subsidizing the other 50% of this country who goes to college? That's exactly right. That's not mm. fair. Now, their answers are bailouts and more money thrown at the problem. I think what you need to do is say, no, 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 no. Not everybody needs a four-year college degree, and increasingly a four-year college degree is not what's going to allow you to achieve the American right. dream in this country. Sure. Instead, like, let's say we are going to allow people to access those funds with the federal funds that we currently uh, let people use for college, yeah. um, you can access those funds for vocational training, for apprenticeship training, idea. things like that. Yeah, can I ask absolutely. you a specific question on this? Because um, Sagar and I were talking about this actually yesterday. The fastest growing uh, industry is healthcare. Yeah. The fastest growing occupation is uh, certified home health, home health aid, yeah. right? Yeah. Which are um, incredibly low paid. I mean, they weren't even subject to the minimum wage laws until just a few mm -hmm. years ago. There was a big profile in the New York Times of a woman who is making, I think, they basically $10 an hour doing very difficult work. Yeah. I mean, how do you make jobs like that, which are the jobs that our economy is spinning off and creating, how do you make those middle class jobs? I think that's a great question. And I think yeah. there's a, there's a, there's a, you know, as, as you both know, there's a growing debate right now within the Republican Party about whether or not we should actually be pri in some way, shape, or form prioritizing those kinds of jobs. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a huge debate because there's our party, you know, one of our principles is free markets, 
right? You know, and whether you want to actually extend into that or not. Um, but I think it's a, you know, it's a challenge that Republicans should yeah. definitely be My thinking response about. to that yeah. would be that the entire legal regime is an intervention in the market right. and that yeah, markets are yeah. not for the markets are not for the man man you know man created the market but Indeed. Yeah, we digress. Fascinating. So thank you Tim. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Hey, thanks for having me. Really appreciate it. Next on Rising, what issues are most important to Latino voters in 2020? One of the most in-depth surveys conducted in battleground states sheds light on their priorities as Rising continues.